Hello and welcome to Warwick iCast. This week's programme is focusing on nanotechnology. It's an area where the university has significant expertise and it's becoming a major new theme across the sciences and engineering. So first we're off to the Department of Chemistry to find out what it's all about. Nanotechnology is basically small science, so you know, when you shrink things down like really, really, really tiny, then we're talking in a nano level. So nano, a nanometer is roughly like a millionth of a millimeter. So if we would take this 5p coin on a side, which is roughly a millimeter in diameter, and then slice it like bread into a million pieces, then we're at a nanometer level. And that's where something really exciting can happen. So imagine like, you're a beach ball on the beach, right? And then there's you throw tennis balls at the beach ball. The beach ball will start to move in a random way. And that random movement is called Brownian motion. So now if I would shrink my beach ball to a very, very small object, and I put it in a liquid, and my liquid is solvent molecules, which then would be my tennis balls, they will bump into my beach ball. And here I've got a little example of this on the screen. It's like these are like two micrometers. So, you know, we're still very, very big, like a factor of 100 to 1,000 as big as nanotechnology would go. The theory behind it is quite, it's quite well established. But the fun bit now is if I make these things really small, brown in motion will overtake and things start to move around really chaotic. So now imagine you go to the shop and you buy a box of Lego and you want to assemble the stuff and all the Lego blocks start to float around like crazy. That's the kind of thing we have to control to make larger optics, well, objects out of this. And that sometimes is, you know, is quite a challenge. But we can make some really remarkable materials using self-assembly, a bottom-up approach, in a way to make new materials that are needed for, well, nowadays science and for advances in human society. Well, exciting indeed. And in fact, something rather special happens to certain substances, doesn't it, when they get reduced to this nanoscale. Could you explain a little bit more about that to me? Yeah, so imagine, you know, if, if you would buy up some Lego blocks and you build a really large sphere out of Lego blocks, then, you know, a number of these blocks will be at the surface of the sphere, but the majority of the blocks will be in the middle of the sphere. So then the overall properties of this sphere will be predominantly determined by the molecules or the Lego blocks that are in the middle of the sphere. Now, if I shrink this sphere to a tiny sphere, then most of the blocks will be on the outside of the sphere, and only one or two blocks will be on the middle of the sphere. And now, the properties of that sphere will be determined by the blocks that are on the outside. So this is exactly what happens in nan nanotechnology, because we can't shrink molecules, or we can't shrink colloidal blocks, but when we make objects smaller, the interface becomes really important, and that's why some remarkable properties can happen. So for example, if we have a gold bar, centuries ago already people used tiny little gold particles to color glass, for example. So the glass windows you see in old churches actually is just glass with these tiny little gold bits in there. And because they're so small, they now start to reflect a different wavelength of light. So you get the different colors, which you obviously do not observe if you just look at a big block of gold. So that's quite interesting. At the University of Warwick, there's been an exciting leap forward. Researchers in the chemistry department have found a way of producing carbon nanotubes so that they instantly form a highly sensitive, ready-made electrical circuit. How we use it is that using lithographic procedures, we turn these into little sensors. Um, so we can make sensors that are very small, for example 25, 50, 100 microns in diameter as disk microelectrodes. And then using voltammetry, which is an electrochemical technique for example, we can detect uh, species in solutions at very low concentration. The advantage of using the carbon nanotube networks over, let's say, a conventional metal of the same size is that you actually have a very low surface coverage, which screens out any background noise. Also, they respond very quickly, and carbon being biocompatible means that you can use it for biological applications. One of the specific uses of this technique is in green technology. The carbon nanotubes are inserted into hydrogen fuel cells. There is a membrane inside of the fuel cell, the membrane which splits the fuel cell into two parts. And this <coughs> membrane is where the reaction, electrochemical reaction occurs. It's really essential for the whole setup. So people using nanoparticles just to catalyze 
to enhance the reaction and to draw the electricity from there. So if we replace the current membranes made of different polymers, if we replace it into single world nanotube coped with nanoparticles, it will be more it will be enhanced. It would use less compounds, less amounts of platinum or palladium which is really, really expensive to have the same property of the same performance of fuel cells.